I'll show you exactly where you need to go and what's involved from beginning to end when you have your well water tested to get the most accurate test results the first time. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now, the only way you truly know what you need to get your water fixed for your family is by having it tested. But where do you go? Which test kit do you get? And how do you interpret those results? And how do you use that info to fix your water? Relax. I'll share all of that with you right now while sampling the water at my house to have it tested. Be sure you watch this video right to the end because I've got some frequently asked questions that you'll definitely want to check out to make sure you do your sampling the right way. And I'll share next steps to getting the best water filtration system for your family. Start by going to mytapscore.com. They offer free shipping of the test kit both ways and have a number of tests for every situation with super to easy follow instructions. Also, they use a network of labs, so your shipping label is customized to your location and the test kit for optimal speedy service. Once there, you'll want to go to uh, selecting your water source. So it's right down here. So in this case, we're doing well water. So you can click on that. And then you've got the uh, well water test. So they've got different well water tests down here. So as you can see, they've basically got three um, different tests here. The essential well water test, the advanced well water test, and the extended well water test. Now, I just uh, for this example, I just used the essential well water test because it had more than enough information um, and, uh, and it's definitely the least costly of the bunch. But uh, if you want to get some more information about that, you can just go to the quick view and uh, it shows you some more information here and see full list here. And it gives you a list of all the things that they do the testing for. And, uh, and believe me, that's more than enough uh, to uh, figure out what's, uh, what's wrong with your water and what we need to know to fix your water. The more complex the test, the more it costs. But unless you have a very unique situation to fix your water and protect your family, you really just need to know your water's total dissolved solids, TDS, um, bacteria content, need to know if there's any fertilizers or iron, arsenic, hardness, manganese, hydrogen sulfide. Most likely you'll start with the essentials water test as I did here. Since tannins are common in our area, although we don't have that uh, telltale weak tea color in our water, th that might indicate that there's tannins present. I'm also going to show you a tannin test too uh, that is not included in the essential water test, but um, I've ordered one as an extra, so you'll know the procedure for that too. Mistake number one. Make sure you check out the list of what each test includes to make sure what you're looking to have your water tested for is included in the test kit that you purchase. Mistake number two, using trendy contaminants over the core kits. The core kits were designed with contaminant prevalence, health risks, and budget in mind. Keep in mind that from time to time, people get really concerned over single contaminants like glyophosphate or uh, categories like pharmaceuticals instead of looking at the big picture. Just because something is showing up in your news feed on your Facebook page doesn't mean it's in your water. Mistake number three, not reaching out to the Simple Lab team if you're unsure before ordering. Their customer service team is world class. If you're confused, they can help identify the right kit for you before you order. Keep in mind that nine out of 10 customers, it's one of the core kits. Step number one, plan ahead. So once you've ordered your kit online and it's being sent to you, you're gonna get an email and you can click into that email and you can create your Simple Lab account. Next, you'll get your welcome email and it has some information that looks something like this. On this uh, welcome email, it'll have your TAP score ID, which you'll need uh, a little bit later and you can go in here to get you to open your report dashboard. So the next thing that I did was read the instructions. So inside your kit, you'll see there's some instructions and you'll see, you'll find a booklet like this that explains the whole thing. Now we're in Canada, so we have the Canadian test, but then if you have a bag like this inside it, this is a freezer bag. So what you need to do is obviously you need to stick it in the freezer. So if you're just getting ready to do the test now and you haven't pre-frozen this, you're gonna have to delay things. And that would be mistake number four. So uh, it needs to be frozen for at least six hours because you're gonna be putting it in here uh, when you uh, send it off. Mistake number five is not washing your hands properly with soap. You wanna make sure that there's nothing on your hands that would cause any bacteria to be introduced into the water samples and that would of course uh, affect the result. And here's a pro tip when you're doing the water sampling, and that is make sure you flush out the pressure tank ahead of time, because what happens is dirt settles in the bottom of the pressure tank, and you wanna flush all that out, because otherwise it'll give you a false reading. To do that, all you need to do is hook up a hose to the hose bib at the bottom of the pressure tank, 
Flush all that out ahead of time before you're starting your sampling and you're good to go. The next thing you want to make sure is that this whole area is super clean because we want to make sure that when we take the sample from here that there's no mold on the outside of this that's going to taint the sample. So to do that you're going to need a cup of water and you're going to need two tablespoons of bleach. Just any household bleach. Just add that to the water. Whoops. Like that. Give it a bit of a stir. All right, then you're just going to submerge the spigot in that bleach solution as best you can, like that. And I've got a cloth underneath here, and as you can see, I've also got a towel underneath here to protect the store, the floor, and then we'll uh, set that aside. Mistake number six is not filling the containers to the proper level or flushing them out with water. You've got to make sure that it's the right level in there. It has to be filled up right to the shoulder, but it doesn't need to be overfilled that you're flushing out those containers. The opposite is also true. If you don't fill it up to the shoulder, there may not be enough water in there to do the full test. Step two, sample collection, which leads us to mistake number seven, not reading the instructions. So it's really important that you do this correctly the first time, because if not, you're not gonna be pleased with the result and the results obviously will be inaccurate. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the sample. So we're gonna take it from here. Now you have to be very careful. You don't put your fingers inside the cap or inside the bottle. And again, you're only gonna be filling up the bottles up to the shoulder here. And now you don't have to fill these quickly. In fact, it's better if you fill them slowly because then it's less likely that air is gonna get in. So you don't wanna rinse these bottles out. And like I say, you wanna fill them up just to the shoulder. So we're still a little bit light here. So that's the first one. We'll set that aside. Actually, we can put it right back in the box. Obviously, you need to make sure that it's closed tightly. Set that back in the box where it came from. And then the same with the second one. So again, we're gonna open this up. You can see there's a tag on here that says it's sterile. So again, we set that aside and we fill it up. And like I say, better to fill it slower than faster because you introduce less air into it. All right, great. So we close that up. Again, make sure it's closed tight and it goes back into the box. And this kit include a hydrogen sulfide test, you know, to test for that rotten egg smell in your water. So that includes two parts. One is this, um, the strip here that you're going to use for dipping into the water and the other is this chart that you're going to use to compare it. So as you can see it says open up here so we're going to tear that off, open this up and get that strip out of there. There it is. So again we don't want to touch that strip but we'll set it aside here for a moment and then we're going to take the water sample. So again, this is a fully flushed water sample, so we want to make sure we take it immediately after we've run the water for a while. And you can see the test samples down here at the bottom, this little tab. So you're gonna push that inside there and you're gonna hold it in there for 20 seconds. So I'll time that. 20, all right. So then you pull it out and compare it to this chart here. So you can see that it's almost, almost there's nothing. And uh, if, I t if I smell the water sample, there's just a faint hint of a smell to it. So then your next step would be to put this beside it and then take a picture of it and submit it in with your water test. So the next step is you put everything together in your kit like you have here. And like I say, the cold water sample goes over, or the, the freezer pack goes over on this side close to the small bottle. And of course we've made sure the bottles are sealed up tight. And then we complete the documentation and take it to the post office. So next up we have our tannins test. So what's tannins? Tannins is the coloration of the water. It gives you kind of a weak tea color and often you'll find that in lake water and occasionally you'll find it in well water too. So you can identify it by putting it into your water into white cups like this. So as you can see the cup in, in my left hand here, which I just spilled of course, is a darker, like a light tea color compared to the one on this side, which is just regular tap water. And this is the tannin test kit. So if we open it up, 
Again, we can see similar to the other ones, see some information about uh, mailing the sample back and uh, the forms, the paperwork that we're gonna fill out in just a couple minutes. And inside here, there's a guide that explains to you how to do the test. And again, this is a fully flushed test. So what that means is you would have done it after you've run the water for five minutes. Now we've already ran the water when we were doing our other tests. So now we can just uh, continue on with that. So here's the bottle. And again, it's got our code on here. And, uh, and all we do is fill it up. Now, normally we'd be filling it from here, but because I don't have tannins in my water, I know that already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, I have a sample here that I know has tannins in it so that we can see how it comes back from the lab and shows a positive tannins test. So then all you do is just pour it in into here. And again, you don't wanna overfill it, but you wanna make sure that it's filled up to the shoulder. Just like that. Close it up tightly. And it's gonna go back into the box. And we're gonna fill out the forms and ship it back to Simple Lab to have it tested. So then next we need to go to the actual uh, essentials test itself. So again, you go back into uh, Simple Lab, go simplelab.com and you go into your dashboard and uh, so, so I'm in Canada, so it's a Canadian essential water test. So you click on that to open it. And uh, so sample info needed. So see the orange box at the top? So you need to uh, include that information at this point. So again, your sampling address. So this is where the, the sampling was actually done. And uh, so in my case, it was at my home. And you'd save that info. And the sampling location, in other words, what part of the house you took the sample from. In my case, it was the pressure tank. Need to record who did the sampling, in this case it was me. And just confirm that uh, the water source is well water. So in this case we used an untreated sample because we wanted to know what was in the water before the filtration system, so we need to indicate that. And the sampling method was fully flushed. In other words, we let the water run before we took the water sample. And then we need to talk about some aesthetic issues, basically what concerns you and your family about your water. Now my sample didn't have any color to it. The tan sample did have some color to it, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Age of the plumbing may have some bearing on the testing. And no, I don't buy bottled water. And without water filtration, we do get some rusty stains. With it, we don't. And back to status. And we do the same thing for the tannins test. And again, the same information, you can just enter it exactly the same way as you just did. Take the postage label out of the box, seal up the box, apply the label to the outside of the box, and take it to your nearest post office to mail it into the lab. When will my TAP score be ready? It typically takes anywhere from 3 to 14 business days, depending on your testing package and your location. I'm in Canada, mine took a little over two weeks. And if you're curious about the progress, you can always sign into your dashboard and check it out. I checked mine out after a few days and it showed here testing at lab and it even showed me an ETA. And after a couple of weeks, the results were ready and you can see them on the dashboard here. So you just sign back into your dashboard and now you can uh, download the results. So you can do them anonymously so that it doesn't record your address and your name and that information. And then you can download it different ways here. So we'll download this. And you can see it's here. So if you have a look at the report, so here it says it did that tannin test and it was not detected. So what was causing that color in, in that sample that I showed you that I was testing? It was probably iron in the water that was causing it, not tannins. So at least we know that. So that's great. So then uh, we'll go back to the essentials uh, water test. And uh, so a lot of the information that we need is contained right at the top here. And uh, so you can see that the pH 7.87, so the water's on the alkali side and uh, uh, mineral content 415 parts per million so the water is fairly high in mineral content there's turbidity some dirt in the water well it is well water so that's going to happen and uh, it shows you the hardness in parts per or milligrams per liter or parts per million but also shows it in 19 grains per gallon so that's the information we need in sizing a water softener alkalinity and uh, some uh, other information here that's important um, but then when you scroll down, you'll see that certain items are highlighted in orange. So that tells you there are items that you need to be concerned about. There's a potential health risk there. So it shows that there's arsenic in, in my water, something I didn't know before uh, today, to be honest. And, um, and then as we scroll down, we can see there's uh, some minor amounts of lead, which is never good. Lithium, 
and uh, some uranium in the water, none of which are very good. Um, so it's something that needs to be addressed at my house, and it has been. Um, and there's iron in the water to 1.1 parts per million. And that's, I was getting rusty stains in that before I got my water filtration equipment. So the next step is to email those results to us, info at watereastore.com. And from there, we can make some recommendation of what you need to fix the water for your fan. Click here for your next video on well water filtration, and I'll see you there. Any questions, add them down below.